Hey, welcome into Carpooling with Ben, ladies and gentlemen. Let me hit the record button because, you know, that's probably something I should do because, you know. It's... Oh, great. We got an audience, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My wife's in the background doing her work. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, what, what, a, what a pandemic it has been now. Yes, it so. has. Welcome into Carpooler with Ben. Folks, if you know anything about me, you know I've been big into music. Actually, since I was a child, I started playing the accordion real young. And as I grew older, I was experimenting with other instruments, including a Korg M1 that I owned for years. And there was one place that used to be in Swansea. Now it's in Raynham that used to fix it because, you know, let's face it, I was kind of heavy handed and would break it quite often. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> from Rick's Music World, Rick Santos. Rick, it's good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Ben. It's been too long. It has been. It has been. Uh, and yeah. uh, you know, fortunately, like I was telling you earlier, my, my QS6 from Alesis is fine. I've learned nice. not to abuse that like I used to abuse my Korg M1, <laughs> although that's the vintage instrument these days. Uh, to find one of those is fun. Yeah, right. But Absolutely. Yeah. First, first and foremost, how are you doing? You look great. Thank you. Thank you. Doing great, actually. I can't I can't complain. You know, we, we had a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, I guess you could say ups and downs through all this craziness, but it actually, you know, we feel like we're one of the lucky ones that came through throughout this uh, this thing. As so many businesses didn't do well, um, we did we did actually fine. Um, our enrollment and music education was down. You know, we did lose you know some students because the whole Zoom thing was difficult for for some people. But and of course, being shut down for three months didn't help. Sure. But once we opened back up, it really the floodgates opened up and, and things started really kicking back up on the retail side. Uh, and and then we, we learned how to navigate the whole um, music education part of it. We did a lot of virtual, did a lot of virtual lessons through all that and then transitioned slowly back into in person. Um, right now, we're probably 70 percent. Um, in person and probably 30% still virtual. Some people love virtual and that's sure. great. You know, and that opened up more doors for us too. Well, absolutely. Yeah. If they, if they don't have to get on the highway, they can be literally across the country, you know, if they have connections or, you know, if they have, if family lives here in, you know, Southern New England and they want a good local place that they know and they can trust, they can go there and meet you. But yet the grandkids right. or the nieces and nephews are you know, down in Florida or Texas or whatever, I mean, those virtual systems can be set up, you know, and, and it Absolutely. really opens possibilities. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's go back real quick into the history of Rick's Music World. Uh, when did it open? What got you into it? How? Talk to me. Give me the, the Rick's Music World history in a nutshell. Oh, oh you want the actual story? Yes. <laughs> Well, okay. So uh, it actually goes back to, um, uh, I, well, I started being a musician when I was 12 years old. So I, you know, I saw the Beatles on TV and I, that did it for me. And I was, I wanted to be a musician. And so uh, two years later, I ended up being in a band, a wedding band forever. Uh, we were together for 22 years called The Nobleman. Okay. And we did probably every wedding that was available out there. And we did every shower and convention and all that kind of stuff. So that really as a musician through my teen years and into my twenties and thirties, I was always playing out. Um, after college, I got into banking for nine years uh, and I was managing a bank in Seacock next to this little music store that I always used to do business with um, the Mullen, the Mullen music stores, sure. um, which they had you know, big places in Pawtucket. And one of the brothers opened up this little music store um, when, when the Pawtucket thing all kind of fell apart, he opened up this little music store and, um, I ended up, you know, always picking up my stuff there. I needed for the weekend or whatever. Uh, he ended up getting ill and he had to sell the business in 1982. Okay. So he came and talked to me about the whole situation and said, Hey, did you ever think about owning a music store? And I said, no, I never did. Even though he says, well, you know, you've got the, you know, you have the background of music, you have the financial, um, experience and sales experience because i was in that too and he said so what do you, you know what do you think and i said uh let me think about that <laughs> i talked to my wife robin about it that night and um and you know we were it, we were in a situation where we were six months uh, we had a six-month-old child robin was on a six-month leave of absence from her 
job at the insurance company at Metropolitan Insurance. And again, I had a career in banking. And, and that night I said to Robin, I said, so I explained everything that was going on. I said, so what do you think? She goes, I think you'd be ideal at it. She says, you know, that's you. She said, that's yeah. absolutely you. And so I said, oh, well, okay, if I do it, then you got to do it with me. Nice. And so, um, so we, we kind of jumped in. We both gave our reg- resignations two weeks later and, and kind of jumped in with both feet in 1982 to this little music store in Seekonk was our first store. And, um, and we just grew it from there. And then us, 10 years later, we opened up a second store in Swansea. And then 10 years later than that, we opened up our third store in Rainham. Um, and then realized that we weren't really cut out to have multiple stores. We just were, we were just more hands-on community kind of people. So, but we designed the Rainham store to be really this cool new concept music store with a cafe and, uh, and performing center and all that type of thing. And then uh, we said, you know what, this is, this is the place we want to be. Uh, this is the concept we want. And we ended up selling out the other stores and um, just concentrated in random. So it has been great. It's been really cool. One of the key elements to your success, obviously, is the uh, your, your lovely wife, but also Absolutely. Over, over the years, you've had great support from incredibly talented and, and brilliant musicians and, you know, technology folks that have worked and done repairs and everything. I know I dealt with a number of them over the years sure. and, and there wasn't. I, I always felt confident going in the store and said, hey, I got a problem with this. I always felt confident knowing that someone there could solve it because yeah. I certainly couldn't, but yeah. they could. And, uh, and it was always, it was always a treat to go in there. And, you know, it's, it's still to me, I, I, I'm a sucker for it. If, if I see a small music shop, you know, you could tell it's a local, you know, it's a mom and pop an independent store. I'll always stop and go in and check it out. And, you know, just to see what's in there. Cause sometimes you see some really unique and cool stuff. You were talking about the cafe, which is a, a, a whole different element to what you were doing, because, you know, it's one thing to take lessons. And if you take lessons in a school, you have your spring concert, your fall concert, maybe a holiday concert or something like that. And that's your little opportunity to perform. But a lot of times when you're taking, you know, private lessons, unless the person is able to pull together a recital, which let's face it, in today's ever busy world may not be the case or leading right. up to the pandemic, right. you had this weekly series where it was a place for your students to just display what they've learned. I went to, I've, I've been to some of these and the most beginner student playing the simplest shrums and get in the whole room to support. Yeah. That's what the, that art is all about. Yeah. That what yeah. that, that is right there because there's a lot of kids who don't have that. And I really think that's why they drop off after right. a certain amount of time. It's like, you know, you've got to reward them. So talk to me about, you know, when you had this idea with the cafe, which by the way, uh, as soon as you open back up, they have delicious cookies there, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let me tell you. Yes, we do. <laughs> Talk to me about, you know, how it works with the lessons and, and just the, you know, it's just this center for, for music and arts. Well, you know, it, it always just made sense uh, to, to us that, you know, it, it's one thing to sell an instrument and it's another thing to learn how to play that instrument. But the missing ingredient for me always was they didn't have a place to play the instrument. So to, to, to provide them with that all in one place, uh, in a very casual kind of vibe atmosphere, um, just made a lot of sense. And I, I, I honestly didn't even know why a lot of people didn't do it, you know, as far as the music stores go. You know, there was so, I think music stores in general were so focused into music retail, part of their business, um, that they didn't think it through. Like, wait a minute, this is a whole, this is a whole journey that we're kind of taking, right? So we're, you know, again, learning the instrument and then, uh, the excitement of all that is playing it in front of people, you know, get to that point where you finally can play in front of people. And the cafe made it very uh, intimate in a, in a situation and casual and um, but not too formal where people got so nervous because what would happen in, in a music lesson, a lot of times the, the teacher would just come out 10 minutes into the lesson and say, hey, you know, he'll just they'll just walk on stage with the student. And there might be, you know, maybe six or eight or 10 
parents hanging out, hanging around the cafe. And it just gave them this very comfortable place to play in front of people. So they would do that all the time. So um, along with the weekly open mic, which became an incredible part of our business that we didn't expect. Honestly, we thought that we would get a lot of students in and, and we thought we'd get some people from the surrounding area, but it ended up being this thing where people came from everywhere. People were emailing us from, uh, you know, from Sweden and France and, and other places in the country say, Hey, I heard about your open mic. Can I perform there as a feature, you know, and, and just stuff like that. So it inspired not only the students, but it inspired a whole community of people to be able to perform again in a, in a really cool setting. So, um, yeah, it was awesome. And you, it, and the space naturally lends itself to also be, uh, if you have, uh, let's say a touring artist, you know, coming through town or some, you know, a, a pro uh, right. endorser for a specific brand or, or vendor. And they say, right. Hey, look, we're going to do a clinic, you know, bring all your guitar students as a person from Fender or Gibson or Marshall, whoever, or, or, you know, Vader or Yamaha, whatever it may be. And we're going to do a little clinic for your, your, it, it kind of lends it to that space because you do have the private lessons, but you also right. have that space there, which is really cool. Uh, you know, something that the pandemic has taken away from, you know, a lot of kids, especially in Massachusetts, or really everywhere, is that corporate band setting. And with the corporate band comes the, you know, the lessons for individual parts, and on occasion, one on one lessons. So really, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on today is because if you've got a student, by meaning just an elementary or middle school or even high school, whatever age student that, you know, was progressing real nicely, really enjoyed the music, you know, private lessons is a great thing to kind of ramp them back up if they're going back into school, or maybe you see something or they really show that passion and desire to, to get into it. Talk to me about, you know, the the music lessons program that you have over there. So, so the music education part of our business is, is extremely important. Matter of fact, it's probably more important than anything that we do um, as far as the music education part. We have incredible teachers, uh, about, 20, about 20 uh, teachers. And um, again, the, um, you know, there's so many studies out there as far as what music education does to a child, especially at an early age. Um, you know, I mean, that, you know, there was a 2009 study in the Journal of, uh, you know, Neuroscience uh, that, you know, basically just talking about, um, you know, musical experience in that early childhood stage leads to, you know, structural changes in the brain. Um, you know, it, it improves auditory st- skills, motor skills, spatial reasoning skills. Uh, and there's been several studies. That's just one of them that I'm quoting. But, there, you know, it, it's... You know, we just we're just so passionate about the music education and because it develops them in such a way, confidence, obviously, uh, that you just don't see in, you know, in, in many other things. So the pandemic has definitely, as I said before, ch- changed how we do it as far as in person versus virtual. But it's still you're still learning. You're still learning the same thing. You're still um in some cases, like I said, it's just easier to actually do it virtually. I, some of our older students, our, our very older adult students that physically have a hard time uh, getting to lessons sometimes, uh, they love the whole virtual thing. You know, they, they just love that. So um, yeah, no, the music education part, again, I, I have to, all the kudos go to our teachers. I mean, they're just, it's just an amazing bunch of teachers, uh, whether they're doing piano, vocal, ukulele, uh, guitar, Keyboards. I mean, just whatever it may be, they're um, uh, they just do an incredible job, and I just love seeing that that journey that the kids take and the adults take. And again, adults that all of a sudden retire and said, "You know what? I always wanted to play guitar." You know, and they come in at that age and start learning and and taking that journey. It's awesome. That's nothing better than that. And and I will say this: your teachers are all uh, high caliber very well trained very versatile and they have this their own network where if a teacher maybe sees a struggling student in one area that teacher can you know conference with another teacher and say hey i'm, I'm trying to get this this 
concept across. Right. Maybe is there a different way? Have you ever experienced this or, or whatnot? So you have such a great network there that you've built up over the years and the legacy and the reputation, uh, Thank you. which is which is truly something special. And and I mean it, folks. If you're out there, if you're looking for a great gift, uh, the gift of music is is a beautiful thing, and y- you want to go with somebody who has been in it for a long time, got in it because his wife told him to uh, you know, <laughs> for the right reasons. Uh, no, it, it is really exciting. And you've had literally, if you had to do a tally, I mean, thousands and thousands of students yeah. in the yeah. past 39 years, almost 40 years yeah. uh, that have come through uh, in, in one way, shape or form, whether it be regular weekly lessons or maybe the punk like me who comes and says, help, I need to fix this. Or, you know, can you can can you teach me these different things? And it, it's all you know, it's always it was always fairly priced. It was always you, you, you paid for the service, but you got so much more than the service. It was it was always over delivering on that value we've done some fun nice. stuff together yeah. with cardi's furniture with uh the various idol uh yes. you know american yes. idol spots and you know working with the local fox providence and uh that was awesome you know that was great some, some true talent there that was that was always tremendous as well so you yeah. know you're, you're you're active you're involved in the community so where can people find rick's music world and and learn more about you well, uh, ricksmusic.com is, is uh, you know, really gives a, the, the website gives a tremendous uh, amount of information as far as what we're all about. But we're actually in Rainham, Massachusetts. You know, we're right on Route 44, right off of Route 24, which is right off of Route 495. So, I mean, the it really comes together where, where we're located. It's very, very easy to get to. Um, and we really hit all the surrounding towns. And again, we can do everything even virtually now, but... Um, when we're in Seekonk and Swansea, we, we, we got a lot of Rhode Island crowd uh, and we get probably a little less uh, now that we're in Rainham. But I think people just don't realize how easy it is to get to us. So but sure. you know, I'd love to see everybody from Rhode Island and Mass and Connecticut, you know, come on down and see what we're all about, because it's really a different experience. It's a different kind of music store. Um, and, um, I, you know, especially if you just come for the entertainment. A Thursday night open mic. Once we start open back up again, yeah, yeah. Um, the Thursday night open mic is just so much fun. It's and well again, worth we, it's well worth the drive past seventy five Dunkin' Donuts if you're just over the line in Rhode yeah, Island to get there. Exactly, I mean, you can be right there in no time. In it's no just time. A, it's a, it's a beautiful <laughs> thing. Rick, all the best to you. Congratulations, thirty nine years Thank coming you. up on the fortieth. That's going to be very special and uh, excited to see as things start to flourish and open back up and and yeah. get back to those uh, those fun nights and giving kids and adults, humans, people, us, your friends, your neighbors, uh, your family opportunities to uh, just enjoy this wonderful gift of music. It's a wonderful way to go into spring and summer. You know, it's this is tough. Sure. That's what the dreams are made of. Absolutely. Well, Rick, I will see you soon. Thank you, I, sir. I promise when I come, I'll leave the squeeze box at home. We don't need to subject anybody to that. Uh, come on, bring it in. Bring That's it right. In. We, we can use it for a planter out front. Yeah. Awesome. So, <laughs> Rick's Music World. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care.